Отступила война, скалыхнула страна от кошата до влаги востока. Скалыхнула страна велика и сильна, и врага разобьем. Well, I might have forgotten a few, but these are the ones I remember uh, the most. I'm going to start with number 10, which is actually Hearts in Atlantis with Anthony Hopkins. So me and my friend jumped at the chance. We went opening weekend. We thought the theater would be packed. There were maybe 20 other people going to see it and another friend of ours tagged along. Uh, let's just say by the end of the film, I would say that most of the audience was actually asleep, except for me and my friend. Our other friend, uh, he actually fell asleep too. So um, the next movie is actually the classic Woody Allen film, Annie Hall. Now I saw this on the big screen at the film forum. It wasn't the first time I had ever seen the film, but it's one of my favorites. And I had called all my friends up and unfortunately most of them lead busy schedules so they couldn't go because I need to see it in the daytime because that was the only time I could. So I went with my friend Jenny, giving you a little shout out Jenny. And we went to see it and I mean it was a packed house but I was surprised at how many people were going to see it for the first time. And I mean, it was like an original audience from the year came out in the 70s because everybody was laughing at the jokes. They were uh, shocked at some scenes, not that it's a horror film or anything, but you know, it, it just felt like, uh, it's like watching a stand-up comedian and you know his act and you've seen it before, but you're with an audience that has never seen it because all the beats they were getting. My next one is going to be number eight, with Jaws. Again, uh, I had never seen Jaws fully on the big screen. And I went to go see it at Radio City Music Hall because in New York City, they were running a thing that they used to call like a night at the movies. But Radio City Music Hall would basically for a week run um, old classic movies and you could watch it on the big screen. And I could see why people not only love the film, but also why people, I guess, believe that Steven Spielberg is like a god among directors. And uh, the kicker to it was that Peter Benchley, who wrote the original novel, came out to introduce the film. Sorry, a little geek out joy there. <laughs> My number seven film is kind of a tie. It is between Scream, which I love. The audience was kind of rowdy, but they didn't talk through it. But through their, I guess, interaction, you could say, with the film, it actually made watching the film a little more exciting than it would have been alone. I mean, to this day, I still feel it's one of the few modern classics and one of Wes Craven's best films. It actually tied with, you're not going to believe this film, but I actually went to go see The Craft in theaters. That is the film about the teenage witches. Now, at the time, horror was not really you know, big in cinemas, so. And I remember I saw it at King's Plaza in Brooklyn, and it was me and a friend, and there was a scene, there's a scene in there, which is like a fantasy sequence, where all these snakes and rats and everything disgusting comes out. And I remember the audience actually being scared. Now, this isn't all girls, mind you. These are actually teenage boys, and they're sitting there shivering, and I'm just like, are you kidding me? This is the best horror has to offer, and this is what you're afraid of? Uh, Mulholland Drive, directed by David Lynch. Every time I go to see a David Lynch movie in a theater, I always have a story. It was with a friend from work and my usual friend who I used to go see movies with, Curtis. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen it. But in the second half of the movie, there are some pretty graphic girl-on-girl -girl masturbation scenes. Everybody in the audience, some would stare ahead, but a lot of people were like looking around to gauge other people's reactions. And I just remember me and an older gentleman both looking at each other like shocked. And then we both turned around and looked at the screen. So I, that was definitely a memorable experience and it's still a great movie. Number five, I'm going to get attacked for this, but I, uh, screw it, I like musicals. I went to go see Dream Girls with my usual movie partner, Catalina. Uh, without a doubt, those uh, singing and dancing scenes, they get to you. And I remember the audience was so into it. They were, that, I mean, they weren't literally dancing in the aisles, but they were really, you know, grooving in their seats. And I was one of them. And it's probably the uh, one time you're going to see Eddie Murphy give not only a good dramatic performance, but a comedic performance where it kind of reminds you of the talent he is capable of that unfortunately he seems to squander time to time on family film. Number four, Shaun of the Dead. Uh, now I am a diehard Edgar Wright because 
I will always mention an Edgar Wright movie to anybody who asks what's a good comedy to see. Shaun of the Dead, I loved, and I saw it in a nearly empty theater. But he, it's not just the quality of the film that was memorable, but here was the thing. It's a near empty theater except for a couple in the back. And the couple in the back is actually having sex during the movie. And I loved Shaun of the Dead, but it was like, which show should I really watch? Number three is the Jim Jarmusch, I hope I said his name correctly, movie Ghost Dog. When we went to go see Ghost Dog, there's a big part of the film where Ghost, oh, well, Ghost Dog is the name of the character, uh, played by Forrest Whitaker, talks to a French uh, refugee who sells ice cream. During the film, he speaks French, and now Ghost Dog doesn't know French. Um, and since this was our first time seeing it, I thought Jim Jarmusch had made this big artistic expression. Wow, he really went bold with that one. It was only until a few days later that I read in the paper that they were offering refunds for people or a free ticket if you went to go see that show because uh, there were supposed to be subtitles, but they were turned off. But to this day, I have not really ever watched the full thing of Ghost Dog, and I like to remember the film that way, because to me, it makes a deeper artistic in impression in my mind. Number two on my list is Audition. Now, Audition is a film by Takashi Miike, and it is one of my favorite films because it reminds me of what I feel a good film should do, which is bring up many emotions in you because it changes genres almost like every 20 to 30 minutes. Towards the end, uh, the film gets very uh, graphic with torture scenes. And I remember an old couple in front of me started leaving the film because the film was sold out. And the lady got to the door and fainted before she could leave because of what she was seeing on screen. I remember another guy in the front row reacting. He laughed because I guess he couldn't believe what was happening and how graphic it was. It wasn't at the lady, but it made the film definitely one of the most memorable experiences of my life. Number one is actually uh, the Bjork film, directed by Lars von Trier, Dancer in the Dark. That film, I mean, Lars von Trier is a very interesting director, but a very strange director. I'm sitting watching the film with a group of friends. So the film starts and we're all sitting there. And as the film goes on, it gets more depressing and ev all the women in the audience are starting to tear up. And I notice my friend, um, Ellie, who's sitting right next to me, He's getting very emotional because he's like, oh, I hate this movie, I hate, this fucking film stinks. Spoiler alert, towards the end, uh, Bjork is kind of on death row. And she is on her way to, they hang in this movie, because it takes place in 1950s. So she's on her way to, I guess what you could say, the death chamber. All of a sudden, he just gets up and runs out like, I hate this fucking film. And he actually hightails it out of the movie theater. And we're all just like looking at each other shocked, you know? And then we're just sitting there like laughing. And again, everybody around us is still crying. But then another friend had come, because we all worked at the movie theater at the time. So she had come, her name is Ai Ling. She's called into the show a few times. Um, she comes in in the middle of the film and then Soon as that final scene happens, spoiler alert, but soon as uh, Bjork is hanged, you know, all the theater is quiet except for her, like, what the fuck? And, you know, that just uh, blew us all away and we started laughing and could not stop laughing even through the credits and while everybody around us is crying. Okay, that is the end of uh, this show, of Jeff's best movie experiences. And um, I hope you tune in for the next segment, which will air, who knows, <laughs> truly. But that will be my worst movie experiences. So that finishes this business. Until next time, we have plenty of unfinished business. And I hope to see you later. But before we sign off, don't forget, have you seen Scott Pilgrim? If not, why not? Because it is awesome. I'll see you next time.